Hey everybody, welcome to Love Always Adventure Often. You know, when we tell people that we moved our family of five out of a house that was 2,800 square feet and into a school bus that's 267 square feet, one of the first questions, if not the very first question they always ask is, how and what did you do with all of your stuff? See, as Americans specifically, and as people in general, we love our stuff, <laughs> and we collect it, and we often have way more than we need. And I'm not going to preach on this video about you know having more than we need and you know yada yada yada. This is just a video for me to talk about the steps we took to downsize our family into a school bus. Here we go. Hey friends, we're the Browns: Chad, Katie, Addison, and Kenya, Milo, and Charlie. We live to love an adventure. This is our story of leaving the norm behind to travel the United States full time, spreading love and encouraging others to do the same. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. So hit subscribe and join us for this incredible journey. Okay, so the very first thing we had to do, and I'm not saying we're perfect at this, it's a practice. We are still figuring this out. But we needed to realize that our stuff was not us and we are not our stuff. Meaning, if we lose some of this stuff, especially stuff that holds memories, we're not losing a piece of ourselves. Uh, we're still the same people, we still create the same amount of value in the world. I know that's one reason that a lot of people have a difficult time letting go of some of their stuff because either it holds sentimental value or they feel like they worked really hard for it. There's a certain sunk cost fallacy in keeping the stuff that we either earned or paid for or all of that kind of stuff. So just remember that, going through this process, you are not your stuff and your stuff is not you. You can keep your identity, you can keep your value without any of the things that you own. So that's as philosophical as I'm gonna get, I'll spare you all of that hubbub. And everything else from here on out is just very actionable steps and this is our experience of downsizing from 2,700 square feet to a school bus. Okay, so my first step is to make a plan. If you don't make a plan, it's going to get overwhelming really, really fast. So when I say make a plan, the first thing is, is what areas are you going to attack first? Now, when I say attack, don't get worried. It doesn't have to be a struggle. This can be a fun process, but I do want you to decide what areas of your home or your storage unit or wherever it is that you're decluttering or downsizing. I want you to think about the areas you're gonna start first and go for the low hanging fruit first. What I mean by that is, Get into the areas like the junk drawers that you really don't care about anything inside of it, or you know the closets that haven't been touched for three years and you really don't care about anything inside. So these are the easy spots. We wanna ease into this process and really get the feeling of letting some of this go. Because for me, I don't know about you, but as I started letting a lot of these things go, it started to feel really good and it got me excited to do more. Before attacking a certain area, say a drawer, a closet, a, a bedroom, something like that, make a goal for what you're going to keep. So namely, when I did my dresser, I made a very specific goal of everything that I was going to keep clothes-wise. So I only wanted two pairs of pants, two pairs of shorts, seven pairs of underwear, and seven pairs of socks. And of course, if you watch me at all, you know I'm always wearing a hat, so I've narrowed that down to five hats. <laughs> anyway, this goal will allow you to stay focused and will help you make some of the tougher decisions. If you're saying just in general I'm gonna downsize but you have no goal for what you're actually going to keep or you're trying to keep, you probably won't get rid of as much stuff as you actually want to get rid of and then you'll get to the end of the process realizing that you've gotta go through it again. So make goals for each specific area that you're going after. Okay, make three piles. Your three piles are absolutely key. We know what these are. These are things you could never sell, you could never get rid of, you could never give away. Maybe they're sentimental value. Just like your non-negotiable items. There's no way we're getting rid of these. These are staying. So make that pile, that's your keep pile. Then you make a maybe pile. And this are, these are the things that are like, ah, oh, we've really, you know, we really worked hard for this or we've 
uh, we love this, but we don't maybe don't use it as often as we should, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's your maybe pile. I think you get a good idea of what that would be. And then you get rid of your disposal pile. And when I say disposal, I don't necessarily mean throw away. That could mean thrift store. That could mean giving away to relatives or finding out who's in need. If it's kids clothes, there's so many resources of kids that need things and that kind of stuff. So those are your three piles. Absolutely keep, maybe, and dispose of. You wanna treat these piles the way they need to be treated, okay? So with your keep pile, as soon as you've gone through an entire area, take that keep pile and organize it in that area right away. Everything has its place. Nothing can take its place, nothing new, get it, right? We can't bring more new stuff into it, so nothing new can take its place. And you'll always know where it is and you'll treat it the way it's meant to be treated because it has its own place. So the maybe pile, you're gonna put the maybe pile out in a common area where you're going to see it and you're gonna walk past it many times. I want you to keep it out there for 48, 72 hours, maybe even a week. And as you walk past this pile, you're gonna look at it. And every time you do so, you're gonna reconsider all of those things that are sitting in that maybe pile. And if there's anything in that pile that needs to be transferred over into the keep and get organized, you could do that throughout the week. But from my experience, I actually started adding more to the maybe pile or moving things to the disposal pile from that maybe pile throughout the week. So it really helped me to just have it there and almost have like a mourning process. <laughs> and that's M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, not M-O-R. Really mourn over, you know, its loss or, or getting rid of it or getting around the idea of getting rid of it. And, um, and then that can just kind of sit there. And then more often than not, I'm really okay at the end of the week or a couple of days just moving that into the disposal pile. So that's how we treat the, the maybe pile. Don't leave it there for very long. I mean, th this is a transitionary space. We don't want it there for very long. Okay, moving on to the disposal. Disposal, I get rid of disposal the day I make the pile. This is very, very important because this is our payoff, right? This is where we get that feeling of like letting go of things and getting organized and feeling like we have more space around us is getting rid of all of this stuff. So if the longer you let that hang around, the longer you're delaying your payoff for this painful process, or could be painful process. I'm not gonna label it that for you. Um, but anyway, I, I always make it a goal by the end of the day or whenever I'm done organizing that space, that pile is going directly into the car, directly into the trailer, wherever, and it's going where it needs to go. So I can feel that gratification, I can see, physically see the difference in my space and feel like I accomplished something. Don't be afraid to take a break. Listen, I get it, this can be overwhelming. Myself in particular, I'm not really attached to things like most things. There's some things that I'm attached to and I'm getting more attached to the things that I'm buying because I'm researching them and making more mindful decisions and that kind of stuff. But um, I don't put a lot of emphasis on things, so it's not a lot of stress for me to downsize. Katie, on the other hand, has a really, really difficult time with it because she attaches a lot of sentimental value to some things that we have and then it's really hard for her to make these decisions. So, if you need, take a break. I have found if you take a break and you leave it for a little bit of time, whether that's a couple hours or whether that's a couple days, you can come back to it with a clearer mind and a better, focus on what your ultimate goal was. My next pointer is if you're struggling with something that you know you should get rid of or you just don't have the space for, but you really still want it in your life, one suggestion or one thing that we've done is taking a picture of it. Uh, we have a Google storage, I mean, we use Google for photo, we use Google Photos, so we store all of our photos on the cloud, we have a lot of space there, and we started taking pictures of kids artwork we started taking pictures of i don't know doilies that we got at family reunions i don't know just pictures that we can remember so that we can still have that memory come back when we look through these pictures but we don't have to have the physical thing to to relive those memories to appreciate the person that gave them to us all of those sort of things so use pictures as a tool to get stuff out of your life now 
online minimalism and organization of photos and stuff like that is another topic that I'm gonna tackle another day. So that may hinder that process, but for now, <laughs> I think pictures are an awesome way to keep the memory alive, to keep the heirloom, but not have to keep the physical thing. So here's my final point. You have to keep your why in mind. Through any tough process, anything that takes a little bit of strength, anything that takes a little bit of, you know, just that, that grit, you have to keep your why in mind or you won't be successful, you won't make it out of the other end where you wanted to be, right? So my encouragement to you is write down why are you downsizing? Is it freedom? Is it uh, less clutter? Is it more clarity? Is it better space? Is it that you wanna travel? Is it that you don't want your kids to have to deal with your stuff? Is it, you know, there's so many different reasons why you might be interested in downsizing. And if you're watching this video, you obviously are. I want you to think right now about that why. And I want you to write it down right now. There's a reason I did this one last is because I want you to write it down. I want it to be the last thought in your mind. And then you can go back and listen to the other steps if you need to, or the other tips. But ultimately, write down your why and post it somewhere in your house or somewhere that, that the cluttered space is or the, the space that you're downsizing just so you can see it on a daily basis. And it reminds you of why you're going through this and that your stuff is not you and you are not your stuff. My hope is that this has been helpful. If you're considering downsizing or you're in the middle of downsizing and it's frustrating, just know you're not alone. We're going through this, others are going through this. But for us, the process has been so, so worth it. We can take the focus off of our things that we would be taking care of and cleaning and organizing, and we can put it where we want to put it, which is exploring, adventuring, and being with each other. Hey guys, if you're thinking about downsizing or you're in the middle of downsizing, I want you to comment below. What is the biggest thing you have struggled with through this process? And remember to love always and adventure often. Wow. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week and remember to love always and adventure often.